Seven sixteen. Come back this early. I mean, they're going to pay us overtime for this. Ain't they? <laughs> <laughs> We're just off on our timing. I don't know what's going on. He'll be looking to squeeze another sponsor in there. He's going to. He's going to realize he forgot somebody here in a minute. <laughs> how much? Oh, no. How much is time and a half times zero? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's point, a good though. question. <laughs> We want to welcome Arkansas Commissioner of State Lads Tommy Land and Bob Sodora. And uh, Bob got a call from Jet the other day and said, hey. And I said, let me make a few calls. So here we are. Welcome, Tommy. Thank you. Good to be in Mountain Home with you today. Good to have you. It was a nice dinner last night at the uh, Baxter County Republican meeting. And uh, uh, Jamie Nicholson spoke last night on some important topics. Just a nice time to get together. And, yes, and it talk. was. So, yeah. So good to spend time with like-minded people. Yep. Here you go. The land commissioner's office, people say, what? You know, yes, it is an elected office. You have, well, I was down there, what, two weeks ago on the 12th? Walked in, the, the first office I went into was Tommy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, good to see you down there. That yeah. was a lot of fun that day. Oh, you know, was. That was, I mean, you think about. Pe people don't know what you're talking about. We know, but the, uh, know. all of the great, on, the great rest of them. On the 12th of August, at two o'clock, Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin was promoted to Colonel in the Army Reserves. Tommy was there, the Governor was there, Tom Cotton, both, all the dignitaries were there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I think what amazed, uh, amazed, I think what impressed me the most was the military. Well, the military bearing of that's just what the military they, does. They're, how they handle themselves. Yeah. Yes. I talked to the young sure. private there. And uh, Lieutenant Governor had spoke with him, and they were talking. And then I went up, and I told the kid, I said, he's probably 19, 20. I said, I envy you. And he says, what? I said, you've got a great career ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And some may disagree, but I was impressed with oh, yeah. what, I mean, the, the whole program was great. Yeah. Just a couple of weeks prior to that, they had an induction ceremony. Really? Yeah, they're in the in the rotunda. Really? And uh, they inducted. I think it was eight uh, new recruits into the United States Army. Really? Yeah, and that was impressive too. And and Colonel Griffin, Lieutenant General, Gir Lieutenant Governor Griffin, actually yeah, conducted. What title? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't know what, whether to call him Colonel or yeah, Lieutenant well, then, Governor. Well, then he was being Colonel. Yeah. Right. That's right. Colonel. Colonel Griffin. Lieutenant yeah. Governor. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Griffin conducted the swearing-in ceremony. It was wow. pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what's it well, like? It's great for the families too. Oh, to be is. in that that area, to be there in the yes. rotunda like that, yes. is just fantastic. Yeah. It's something to remember. Yeah. Did you ever think 20 years ago that your office would be in the state capitol? No, absolutely not. Yeah. I, I, um, sometimes I look back at my life and how things have changed over the years, and I'm. I kind of wonder what happens sometimes, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, you've got land commissioner's office, lieutenant governor's office, governor's office, treasurer's office. Yeah. Well, just to be one of the seven auditor. elected uh, <clears throat> constitutional yeah, I mean, officers yeah. of the yeah, state. Pictures so over when here you, when you look at that, when you think <clears throat> about that. And, and that's an and that's a important position that you hold. Yeah, it is. It and, is. And I don't know that people realize, but maybe you could explain and expound yeah, a little yeah. bit on what yeah. it is. To, yeah, the... Uh, uh, the state of Arkansas, of course, the uh, state government is divided into three branches, just like the federal government. You have the uh, judicial branch, and then you have the legislative branch, and then you have the executive branch. And the executive branch is made up of seven constitutional officers. You have the governor, the lieutenant governor, the secretary of state, the attorney general, the state treasurer, the state auditor, and the state land commissioner, or commissioner of state lands is, a, is the technical name of the, of the title. And uh, those seven offices make up the executive branch of state government in Arkansas. Uh, the land commissioner's office originally started out as the office that granted deeds, changing the ownership of property from the federal government to private citizens. Back during, you know, uh, I, it became, it was a very famous part of history was the uh, Oklahoma land rush. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what, what you did was you went out there and you staked out, each, each individual could stake out, I believe it was 160 acres or a quarter section. And, uh, and that property transferred from the federal government to an individual citizen. Well, we didn't have a land rush quite like uh, Oklahoma did. Mm -hmm. But still, we had federal lands that, that were homesteaded. And the land commissioner's office created the deed and created the legal description to change that property from federal hands 
to private hands. And of course, since Arkansas no longer had any federal lands, we assumed other duties as in the office as we as we went along. And we handle tax delinquent real estate. We handle um, uh, mineral right issues re relating to what the state of Arkansas owns. We have uh, riverbed issues that we deal with. That's technically called submerged lands. If you hear the term submerged lands, that's dealing with riverbeds. And uh, we deal with debris removal. <clears throat> we also deal with sand and gravel mining out of Arkansas's na uh, navigable rivers. And then probably the smallest part of our office, but I think definitely one of the most interesting parts of the Land Commissioner's Office is we hold uh, historical documents relating to real estate. Wow. In our office, we have the original survey notes uh, of the surveyor for the Louisiana Purchase. Are you kidding? Well, yeah. Very. What was that, 1830 was when 30? the survey was really? done. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's a lot of people don't really realize that the survey for the entire Louisiana Purchase didn't start in Louisiana. It started in Arkansas. It started in southeast Arkansas, and we have a state park in southeast Arkansas, and it's called the Louisiana Purchase State Park. Huh. And uh, very small state park. You pull into the parking area, you park, and there's an elevated walkway going out through a swamp. And you follow that walkway out there, you'll come to a monument. That monument is a starting, starting point, point for the well, Louisiana Purchase Survey. Something. Yeah. Uh, and one thing really interesting about that about that survey marker, this just impresses me so much. A few years ago, using GPS technology and satellite imagery, they wanted to go back and check and see the accuracy of, of where that starting point should have been. Now remember, it was surveyed out in 1830. It was two inches off. <laughs> two inches off for the entire <laughs> western part of the United States of America. Yeah. I mean, done with chains and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, they were out walking that. It, that is that, just... And it, and it wasn't, I mean, yeah. there was nothing there. Yeah. There was bears and Indians and right, right. wolves and everything else. I yeah. mean, to Can be out in Can you imagine that. southeast Arkansas in 1830? Can you imagine uh, here even? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's that's impressive. I can tell you, I, you know, it just to me, it shows exactly what can be achieved with hard work yeah. and attention to detail. Yes, oh yeah, sir. Oh, yes yeah. sir. Two inches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that that's amazing. Yes, it is. Where is that at in so, southeast Arkansas? It's it's close to. I don't think it, it's close to Phillips County, Helena area. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. When when you're on your way from uh, Little Rock to Helena. Uh, you'll drive past the entrance to the park. Really? Yeah. So you, so that office was responsible. There's a lot of uh, property that has abstracts to it, not mm -hmm. just the title work, but and you get the physical abstract. Yeah. If the property owner ahead of, and we had one that was like that, and it, it went back to the Civil War, mm -hmm. and General whoever it was transferred it over to this yeah. guy, and it broke it down into the 40s and things. Very, very interesting to see the local history here and how things came to be. Oh yeah, abstracts. You know they don't they don't produce abstracts much anymore. Yeah, but, no. But uh, I have I still have an abstract from from a farm I used to own, a cattle farm I used to own, and it goes back I believe to Andrew Jackson, uh, President Andrew Jackson, yeah. and uh, you know you can just go through each each layer of the abstract and see. At one time I think the farm sold for. Um, uh, two two mules in good health and a wagon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. mean, you know, and that's sure. ju that's just interesting, yeah. you know. Well, so oh yeah, oh yeah, we knew. Yeah, we had a family reunion down here at Lake Norfolk one time. All my it was my dad's family, and they were all southeast Missouri, Neelyville, Naylor, Popper Bluff area. <clears throat> and when my grandmother's, my dad's mother's parents got married, they borrowed eighty five dollars. Mm -hmm on a three-year note yeah to start the farm they yeah. needed a cow a bull they need chickens they needed odds you know they borrowed 85 dollars and paid it off in three years hmm. but how did they do the well, surveying good, all those years ago I'm, do what that was pretty good <clears throat> to pay that off that fast but the surveying was done with chains and sticks and chains and they would take it from this point and go out with the compass and mark that Put a marker and then go to the next one and yeah. and continue on like that. Let me pull up my phone. <clears throat> it gives me the north and west coordinates. Oh yeah. Was it thirty six twenty 
36, 20, 50 by 92, it'd be 92 degrees, 21 minutes, 45 seconds west, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure they started with a sextant to yeah, take a yeah. shot off the stars, yeah. Yeah. determine their position as close as they could. Yeah. And then from that point on, if you'll look at those abstract, it'll say so many chains really? to the yeah. east to a point, and then so many chains to the west or to the north to a point, and so on like that. And, of course, a lot of those old abstracts will be uh, to the large <clears throat> oak tree yeah. or something oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. They'll use natural uh, uh, huh. points, you know, to, to designate corners and things like that. Uh, I remember looking at a uh, uh, at a legal description of a piece of property in, I believe that was Greene County, and uh, uh, it's it's, northeast Arkansas. It was uh, it went down the ditch line to the center of the Cash River, down the center of the Cash River to another ditch line, and of course, uh, by the time I looked at the property. There weren't any ditches. Wasn't quite the same as now. It's done. Yeah, <laughs> things change. Yeah, things change. So you talking about mineral rights? That can yeah, that can that can get tied up in court for a long time yeah. on mineral rights. Uh, mineral rights are a, uh, a a very complex issue. And really, it, it's they're not they're not simple. Uh, mineral rights can be separated from the real estate. So I could sell you 40 acres, <clears throat> and I could retain the mineral rights. Mm -hmm. You'd have the surface rights. I'd have the any any mineral rights to any minerals below the surface. Um, the farm, the farm that we had for a while, when we purchased the farm, we owned 50% of the mineral rights. The other 50% had been retained in the 1930s by a timber company called Donovan Lumber Company. Donovan Lumber Company was owned by three brothers. So they retained 50% of the mineral rights of, I don't know, thousands of acres. Is that in Cleveland, Donovan, Missouri? County. Uh, no, it's actually a community outside Searcy in White County. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, so they, uh, they retained 50% of the mineral rights of my farm. Now, those three brothers, I believe, I believe if I remember correctly, that they passed away in the 1950s. Those 50% mineral rights from my farm passed to their heirs. By the 1990s, many of those heirs had died, and it had passed to those heirs. And my wife had checked in the 1990s, and I believe those 50% mineral rights were divided 190 different ways. So we think, <laughs> yeah, if I yeah, right. yeah, well, I'm right. saying, but yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, they can be very confusing and, uh, uh, you know, one thing I think we need to keep in mind is in my, my County, Cleburne County, we're the second largest gas producing County in the state mm -hmm. of Arkansas. So mineral rights are very valuable. Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and other counties that, that, that don't have valuable mineral rights. They have mineral rights, but they're not, they're not producing mineral rights. No one's making any money off of them. Uh, you know, keep in mind that 30 years ago, no one, have, no one would have thought the mineral rights in Cleburne County had any value either. But now they're, they're extremely valuable. And South Arkansas, the same, same way. You know, uh, I have a feeling that as technology continues to develop and increase over the years, that you're going to see other parts of Arkansas that don't have producing minerals. In other words, they're not producing gas or oil or something else. Um, they, uh, I think, I think you're going to see that grow around the state. Right now in South Arkansas, they're, they've got a pilot program going. A company out of out of uh, Canada has got a pilot program going to extract lithium. Oh yeah, yeah. from brine water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember Curtis Coleman used to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if that if that proves profitable. Yeah. That's a that's an extraction process that's gonna yeah. take over South Arkansas, I think. So, very okay, valuable. Here's the dumbest question you're ever gonna be asked in your life. Okay. Wait the diamond minute. mine at Murfreesboro. Uh huh. That's got to be. I mean, it's got to be a mineral. I mean, I, it. and it's only <laughs> down there. Yeah, it is. That. Did somebody come up with like a two point three? This made a three something the other day. Did yeah, they? Yeah. Three yeah. something. Yeah. Three point two, I believe. Was really? The last wow, one I didn't hear that one. Yeah, and I think we are the only state. Yes. In in the United States that has a diamond mine, we're the only. How do place. the diamonds? Keep it's not even a mine. It just keeps coming up. And we're. I guess they made mine. They made mine in the surface. surface but as far as the surface, yeah, yeah they, they just, just surface mining there after heavy yeah. rain. And of course, there's no commercial mining of diamonds there. Mm -hmm. That's uh, it's a state park. Yeah. But they apparently what they do, from what I understand, is they plow those fields every year, maybe two or three times a year. They plow those fields and turn the dirt over, and then you just go out there and find it. Have you ever been to the? No, I want to go down there. That that is 
Uh, have you been down there, Bob? No. No. That is some of the slickest dirt I have ever been been in in my life when it's wet. I'm oh. telling you, it is just, slick. Just a clay really? mix in yeah. there, and it, yeah. yeah. But it's it's very heavy soil. Really. But uh, it's it's pretty interesting place to be. It sure is. I'd like to go down there just. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Anyway, set, coming up on 732, Martha Land Commissioner, right after this, and Bob Zadora after the break. Jim Brown Company keeps you cool when it's hot and warm when it's not. A trusted name in the mountain home community, Jim Brown Company provides timely heating and cooling installation and repairs. Our certified technicians incorporate new technology on every job to provide you with the most advanced services. At our metal fabrication shop, we handle projects big and small. We've created everything from commercial ducts to custom designs. I'd recommend Jim Brown Company to my friends and neighbors. The reason being they have high-tech equipment, their service techs are well qualified for the job that they do, and they also send me a report after all the work is done so I know exactly what my unit's doing. By visiting our showroom, you can learn all about our heating and cooling products. We'll educate you on your options and help you decide on the right solution. For total comfort at your home or business, choose Jim Brown Company. Quality service with a family name since 1964. Take a step back in time when going to a barbershop meant more than just getting a haircut. Come into Legionnaire's Barbershop today, a unique gentleman barbershop. Get back in style from a former celebrity hairstylist and a licensed barber instructor who are trained in tonsorial arts and lock removal and happy to give you a straight razor shave. Legionnaire's Barbershop is veteran owned and operated and located at 848 Highway 62 East in Mountain Home. For a full old fashioned barbershop experience, stop by Legionnaire Barbershop today. Your car is a member of the family. It takes you where you need to go and it makes sure you are safe at all times. When a wreck or accident happens, trust the only place that will treat you and your vehicle like a person, not a number. From collision repair and windshield replacement to paintless dent repair and hail damage removal, Dent Boys can cover all your automotive repair needs and make sure you are satisfied every step of the way. Call or visit the professionals at Dent Boys today and see the Dent Boys difference. At Connor Family Funeral Home, our goal is to provide our friends and neighbors with caring, compassionate services at an affordable price. Connor Family is a full-service funeral home that offers a wide range of services to meet your family's needs and customs. We are the first on-site crematory in the area and provide many options to memorialize your loved ones and address all the details for a more personalized service. Where compassion and affordability meet, Connor Family Funeral Home in Mountain Home. Sure, all mowers cut grass, but only a Ferris mower with suspension technology can provide you with increased productivity, quality of cut, durability, and comfort. The caster wheels and cutting deck are connected to the frame beneath the suspension. This lets the deck follow the wheels as they move up and down in relation to the ground contours. Maintaining the distance between the deck and the ground results in a beautiful, consistent cut. Visit your local Ferris dealer to experience the difference suspension makes. Hi, we're Bob and Linda Zadora, the Z Team at Century 21 Lee Mac Realty. And we'd like you to meet the rest of our team. When you are working with the Z Team, you will find that not only are they down to earth people, but they are trained professionals who work with downsizers, first time home buyers, and clients who may want to relocate to our beautiful Ozarks. Our team has agents who specialize in Lake and River properties, listing and selling raw land, acreage, and all residential homes. Listing your property with the Z Team will help get it sold with unmatched Century 21 Global Marketing. You can find out more at RetireToArkansas.net. And we're back visiting with Commissioner of State Lands, Tommy Land and Bob Sodora. And uh, you've got an interesting job. Thank you. I you think know, it is. And too. when you, we were talking before the break about uh, the, say that again, the governor's, what was it, commission on levies? What, uh, uh, it was, it's a levy task force. Task force, yes. Yeah. 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 And, and what they're doing is you're going over the levies that are currently here. You were saying there. We're, look, we're looking at, at specifically right now. We're looking at the levees that are involved with the Arkansas River. Uh, we just had a tremendous flood through the Arkansas River Basin, and we had a few areas where the, where the river overtopped the levee. The one there around Dardanelle in, in Yale County, 
the levee is, I believe it's about a mile and a half from the river channel. But the uh, river rose to the point that it overtopped the levee. And in about five hours, the county, I talked to the county judge there and we went out and took, took a look at this. In five hours, a mile and a half away from the river channel, it washed out a hole and a highway 44 feet deep in five hours yeah. and push sand out into out into an agricultural field washed away uh, a shop and uh, a barn and some silos and it did almost as much damage now this is something i think people don't realize but it did a lot of damage when when it overtopped and washed the levee away and the water flowed into the field but it did almost as much damage when the river went down and the water turned around and flowed back out through that hole. Because it took that soil out with right. it. Wow. Right. Wow. So I, it, wow. was a, it was an impressive amount of damage. When you look and see that, you just see how important levees are in the state of Arkansas. So, you know, I, oh, the levee broke, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because it, it's everything behind it. I mean, there's miles and miles and miles, especially there where you got, it's yeah. all fields and stuff and it covers such a large area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, that's what you get. You're getting all the debris that's coming in, and then you got to get it back out. And these guys can't plant in the interim. Yeah, yeah. Piles of sand, oh, almost as tall as I am, out in the guy's field. Good yeah. grief! Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, it is something. So, how else. many? What's the duration of him fixing his farm? Is it two years, three years to get it back to where it was? Well, he's dealing with. Um, of course, he's dealing with the federal Fremont, government, yeah. Oh boy! And the federal government does not move quickly, <laughs> so no. Uh, no. he's working working on that. I, I would I would sincerely hope that it it would be done this year. Yeah. But but I don't. I'm not very confident. No, is he that. running? That would be more cattle in that area. He no, it's it's row crops. He really? had in he, he had oats planted in really? his field. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he I was growing know. oats, and um, and then just just not too far down the road from his farm uh was a i believe it was a small hog hog operation hog mm -hmm. farm so uh um just varied types of agriculture but there's right there in the arkansas river valley that's good good soil and they have sure. a lot of row crop well, well, there sure. now, and, Kenny, that would be west of little rock but south of i-40 is that where that would that's work? correct is it? yeah West of Little Rock and so you're and out south towards Moralton, perhaps Roseville area. Yes, when um, right across the river from Dardanelle is Russellville. Okay, okay, yeah. So, yeah. And so, so that just kind of really shows how is our taxes are called upon to, for different projects. Mm -hmm. You know, we want new roads, we want this, we want that, and we don't really think about the importance of something like that. Mm -hmm. You're saying they're over the average age is 69 years. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they need some repairs. Yes. And just constant maintenance and things. And we just kind of, I think sometimes things like that get lost in how we spend money on other things. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you, it also shows the importance of, of local government because oh, yeah. levies are overseen by levy boards. And levy boards are local groups of people that are in charge of hmm. making the, sure the, the levy is maintained. Okay. And uh, sometimes you'll have multiple levy boards in one county. Oh, okay. And, okay, uh, so if a levy board has an issue, do they call the land commissioner's office? No. If a levy board, uh, a levy board is basically autonomous. And most levy boards that are operational tax <clears throat> the people that are protected behind that levy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have something called a special improvement district. Right. And you're charged special improvement district taxes. So a levy will, uh, a levy board will tax the people that are protected by the levy. The money that's paid in goes towards maintenance of that levy. Because the things that can damage a levy, animal burrows, um, trees, and things like that, the roots growing through there weaken the, the levy. And then as the water pre puts pressure against it, it, it erodes quickly. And um, so all of those things that those tax dollars are supposed to be used to keep that levy maintained and keep it up to standards. <laughs> and a lot of levy districts no longer have a board. The board people have passed away and no one's willing to serve. Yeah. And uh, so what happens is you have a defunct levy board and no one's maintaining the, the levy and those levies get in very bad condition. I, I tell you, it is so important for Arkansas uh, citizens to be involved in their government 
Yes, and indeed. You don't hear anything about levy boards normally until something bad happens. Yeah, sure. But it's the people of Arkansas that make sure those levies are in good condition. So, another dumb question, Tommy. Mm -hmm. How do you maintain a levy? You keep it mowed. You remove any tree growth yeah. by either mowing or perhaps spraying or something like that. If there there is a problem with animals burrowing into the into the side of the levy, you can they live trap the animal, remove the animal to to some other place, fill the fill the burrow in to try to keep that keep that down. And of course, over time, especially if there's a road on top of the levee, mm -hmm. you'll have some erosion. Okay, so perhaps you'll have to truck some dirt in and spread it, build the build the levee back. Uh, levees do not have a uh, consistent um, set of regulations. Some levees, for instance, have what's called freeboard is the highest water level is here. So freeboard is how high the levee is above the highest water level. Some levees have seven feet of freeboard. I was talking to a guy, I think it was in St. Francis County. Their series of levees have seven foot of freeboard. What's that extreme northeast Arkansas? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. St. Francis and, River? Right. And uh, uh, but other levees only have two or three feet of freeboard. Really? Yeah. And, and the St. Francis River, all that up there is just flat as the top of this. Yes, desk. it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there, there are thousands of acres that are affected by, by levee. Okay, let's talk St. Francis River because I cross it several times when I, I go northeast Arkansas. Arkansas is on one side and Missouri's on the other. Mm -hmm. We maintain it on this side, but they don't on their side. Then they get the water. Then they get the water. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's correct. Uh, now, what if you build your levee twice as tall as Missouri forces water? <laughs> well, <Missouri. laughs> well, <laughs> levee, uh, I probably Missouri would build theirs even taller. Yeah, I was going to say you're saying <laughs> We'd that, have right? levee, levee wars. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like digging a moat. Yeah. 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 Because, yeah. I mean, uh, you come out of Paragould, Arkansas on 412. You know where uh, it's at right. over there. And just, yeah. it, it's just, there's a little um, uh, Kerr McGee station. I mean, you just cross into Missouri. But I mean, just literally, you just cross the St. Francis River, and you really don't know because they don't mark yeah, the state okay. line yeah. right there coming to Missouri uh -huh. until you're in Missouri. Yeah, yeah. But it's just as flat as the top of this. Right. This this levee task force is right now. We're focusing all of our attention just on the Arkansas River. Yeah. yeah. Because there are so many levees and so many levee sure. districts around the state with the Cash River, the White River, uh, even the Little Red in yeah. White County has has some levees, and. Um, uh, the Corps of Engineers tries to keep up with with where levees are. They try to keep up a map, but it's impossible to keep them all up. Um, so I'm thinking right now where I travel, you've got 11 Point River in Missouri. You've got the current river that comes from Missouri into Arkansas at Pocahontas into the black. So if you have a lot of rain in south central Missouri to southeast Missouri, how does that affect Northeast Arkansas on the Black. Now, where's the Black River? I'm not familiar. Once you get to Pocahontas, the Black River, where it feeds into Mississippi, or is it going to the White? I believe the the I think the Black feeds into the White River. Okay. So wow. Yeah, yeah. It, there's uh, one thing we're blessed with in Arkansas is a lot of water. Yeah. Yes, sir. And and that is a blessing. It yeah. sure is. Um, if you spend much time out west where there isn't much water. You appreciate oh, what Arkansas we, we got. have people that come, you know, looking for properties, and mm -hmm. and they they're just amazed. They are that there's this much water, like just laying around. Yeah, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's lakes and they're high, yeah. and the waters are yeah. moving down the river yeah. and things like that. It's uh, but, we you are know, blessed in <clears throat> with every blessing. You know, there's there's also uh, some trials. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, and sometimes when when we face flooding conditions, we have some cer certainly have some things to be concerned about. And so so you, you, aside from the levees, which mm -hmm. is a, a small part of what you do, the right. bigger part of what your job is, mm -hmm. is the taxable uh, properties that that go under, and you're here to do some of those today and tomorrow, yes. so that people may be interested. Yeah, we had we had the Baxter County tax delinquent auction yesterday, and today we're going to be in Fulton County, and then tomorrow we'll be in Izzard County, and. Um, we, um, uh, what, what happens with, with property on, on a tax delinquent mm -hmm. basis, it becomes tax delinquent in your county and your county collector attempts to collect the taxes for about two years. After a two year period, the county certifies it to my office 
and we spend another two years trying to contact someone, letters uh, of, of notification, trying to contact people and say, hey, you need to come in and pay your taxes. At the end of that four-year period, approximately four-year period, we hold an auction and we auction off all the real estate. We hold an auction to auction off all the real estate, not all of its sales. But, uh, and we held the auction for Baxter County yesterday, Fulton County today, and Izzard County will be tomorrow. And, and anybody can come yes. and bid? If you come in, the one thing you've got to realize is every parcel you, you buy, okay, the first $100 that you pay us has to be in cash for every parcel, okay? So if you buy five parcels, you've got to have $500 in cash. And then, uh, so you, you purchase the parcel, and then the, the delinquent owner has 10 business days to redeem that after the auction. Then after the auction's over with, we'll issue a limited warranty deed to the one who purchased it at auction if, the, if it's not redeemed. And, uh, uh, and so then, like I say, and, and, and of course, Bob, you, you know about limited warranty deeds, yeah. and there still needs to be some, some title work done to clear the, to clear the title. But uh, it, it's an inexpensive way sometimes to purchase property. Um, you need to do your research before the auction. Sure. And you can look on our website, COSL.org. That's commissionerofstatelands.org. Okay. okay. You can look on our website, and you'll see a button there, a tab that says auctions. You click on that. You go down the list of counties. You click on your county, and then it'll list the parcels. And especially in Box Baxter County, because I know Baxter County is a mapped county, you go down, scroll down there, past the legal description, and you get down there and you'll see a map button. You click on the map button and it'll pull you up a map and show you exactly where the lot is located or the parcel is located. And so it's, it's easy to find and then you just do your research on it and determine if that's what you're looking to buy and come to the auction and bid on it and best man win. There you go. Now, I'm on the Equalization Board in Marion County and I've been on the one in Baxter here as well. Is there any way to move this process along to get these tax delinquent properties paying taxes again for the good of everybody else? Well, that that's the purpose of that auction, of course. I mean, the time element. Right. Does it take two years to try to find somebody? We have that, computers of course, and that's, Facebook that, and yeah, whatnot. That's, that's legislation, okay? Mm -hmm. Legislation requires that time period. Wow. And, and the thing is, is, you know, from, the, from my perspective, is we do not want to take property away from people if we can give them a little bit of time to come up with the money to pay their taxes. So I think uh, two years two years in the county and two years in the state seems like a long period of time, uh, but at the same time we're being very careful about how we deal with other people's property, and I think that's important. Yeah. Coming up on 750, time for a break. Be right back. It takes the right gear to survive out here. There she is, Ferris. It's the best gear around. Strong as an ox, safe as houses. Out back, there's one powerful beast. Awesome. Four wheel suspension handles whatever mother nature throws at you. Designed to take the hard out of hard work and deliver all the power you could need. So if you want to tackle the great outdoors, get yourself a Ferris. So there I was, naked as a jaybird in the shower with soap in my hair and eyes when I lost water pressure down to a dribble. I immediately grabbed my towel and dialed up Jake at JM Sales and Pump Service. Jake came right over and fixed my water pressure. Now I can take my showers with confidence. Just call Jake. For all your sales and pump needs, just call Jake at JM Sales and Pump Service, 870-431-5445. He offers high quality, stay right products. When you need durable and comfortable hospital scrubs stat, you need the Uniform Shop. The Uniform Shop is the place for top quality uniforms, carrying a great selection of name brands, including Carhartt, Bear Bradley, Urbane, and Gray's Anatomy, as well as shoes from Skechers, Nursemates, Softwalk, and Lindau. Stethoscopes from Littman, Blood Pressure Cuffs, Scissors, Name Tag Retractables, Compression Socks, Paramedic VDUs, and Rocky Boots. The Uniform Shop also offers customizing embroidery and minor alterations. Let us put you in uniforms. Shop the Uniform Shop. Are you ready for some football? Hometown TV is back with live football and the game of the week. Friday night, area high school football with announcer Bob Rechtenwald, bringing you the best in play-by-play. -play. Visit hometowntv.net for schedule and show times. 
Plus, watch instant replay live from your mobile device, whether at the game or not, right here on K26 and XL7. In 2014, I had back surgery, and I had always been told that chiropractic care, once you have that, is not possible. After coming up here to see Doc Osgood, I've learned just how much it is helpful, and I find now that I can do a lot more activities, like uh, mowing the yard or even my job as a sports reporter. I'm going to the games is not a problem anymore. I don't have the near the problem that I used to, and as I keep progressing, I think it'll get better and better. If you want the best breakfast or lunch in the Twin Lakes area, then you've got to come to the Old Time Restaurant. Voted the best breakfast and lunch for 2011, the Old Time Restaurant not only gives you the southern hospitality right when you walk in the door, they also offer scrumptious breakfast options to curb that early morning appetite. Or stop in later in the day for a tasty sandwich, salad, or a daily special. If a sweet tooth is your guilty pleasure, you can't go wrong with a pie lady cooking out over 30 different types of pies. That's the Old Time Restaurant located on the square in Mountain Home. Seven fifty-two. Visiting with Commissioner of State Lands of Arkansas, Tommy Land. Real quick, Fulton County auction today, ten o'clock at the Fulton County Fairgrounds, one twenty-four Arena Drive in Salem, Arkansas. Then tomorrow, the Izard County auction takes place at ten a.m. Ozarka College, two eighteen College Drive, in Melbourne, Arkansas. Tommy, it's good to see you. Good to have you up here, and we've got about seven or eight minutes here. Um, Like Bob was saying, it just, um, we've got good people in our offices and it just seems like things are running smooth. Hmm. Well, I think they are, you know, uh, the, there's always going to be problems in government. Yeah. Okay. Because people are in government <laughs> and people have problems <laughs> and that's just, that's just the way it is. But, but I do believe that we have some good folks in office that are trying to do things efficiently and trying to do things cost effectively. Uh, I, I, I'll just be honest with you, and, and like I said, I, I believe this started before I became land commissioner. Uh, the land commissioner's office is, is an efficient operation and takes care of all 75 counties and, and takes care of the auctions and, and the research that needs to be done on this property and everything. We take care of the uh, riverbed, the submerged lands around the state of yeah. Arkansas, uh, historical documents, and we do that with about 40 employees and it's we have good uh, dedicated employees that that i believe work hard to serve the people of arkansas and and i know sometimes that doesn't always seem true in in state government but i i can assure you the people in my office have have good attitudes well sometimes it seems like you're trying to find a tick on tree bark at 300 yards mm -hmm. you know yeah. what i'm trying to say yes. yeah sometimes sometimes that that is true yeah huh bob no, I just, I, you kind of, that you're involved in as many things in, in all the important work that that office does mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, people don't really realize it because it's just kind of like, when they, by the time they get down that far in the ballot even, right. it's like, a what? A yeah. commissioner of who? You know, yeah. and, and I think that the, uh, the work that gets done there, people don't realize, being in the real estate business, that uh, all the work that gets done to make sure that these Parcels are what they're supposed to be, and like you say, to go back and find it there were within yeah. two inches mm -hmm. using GPS compared to the chain right. method is it's just amazing. That's amazing, yeah, and, yeah. you know. Yeah, it, you know, I, it, it is an office that, like you said, is it's not well known, but I, I can tell you, it it provides a valuable service to the people of Arkansas, to especially to county government. And we appreciate yeah. your efficiency well, because thank you. without the efficiency of what you you're you're doing now what john thurston did in past years it yeah. helps us you bet you bet <laughs> we may not realize it on an everyday basis but mm -hmm. you know oh, no, but when the assessors call up and say what have you got on this parcel or we have a question about this what do your records show mm -hmm. and being able to produce that for them that's amazing yeah. you know that's great that's you great bet. and that's what it, government's supposed to be it's supposed to all be working together mm -hmm. you spoke of uh, being involved in your local government and that really can't be overstated Go to your quorum court meetings. Mm -hmm. Go to school board meetings. If you have a kid in school, go to yeah. a school board meetings. See what they're talking about. Don't wait until you get a note going, oh, we're going to change this or change that. Go there while they're discussing it. Quorum court can't be overstated. I mean, I go all the time and people are like, oh, God, 
but to see how just see how the government works mm -hmm. you know it's literally your tax dollars at work yeah uh, you know government touches our lives every day yes it does and so I, I tell you what, we need people involved in government. And just like I was talking about the levy boards, uh, no one wants to serve on the levy board sometimes. And after a while, that levy board just becomes defunct and no longer operates. You know, I, I tell you, when, when that levy gets overtopped and the water's running down your city street, okay, you'll wish that someone was on that levy board overseeing yeah. that. We need to just step up. And it's going to take some time. And not everything is going to be really interesting. You know, some of it's going to be like watching well, like paint. Watching paint. But, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. But, but you know what? It's just one of the necessary things of operating our country in a very efficient way and in a way that doesn't just um, get the job done, but it also it looks out to serve the people. And it's important that our Kansans get involved in all kinds of local government and be interested in it and have input in it if they really want to make things the very best they can be. And there's New Arkansans coming here every day. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and they bring skills with them from other places, oh, yeah. other yeah. things they've done. No, we're never going to be California. No. We're never going to be, you know, those who come and say, well, this would be a great place if only. That's probably not going to happen. But you might be able to help to make some small changes and, and just do something nice for your fellow man. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good thing. Yes, it is. A very good thing. Wow. Boy, you know, if you think about I don't know, I sit here thinking about that, that coordinate stuff at the Louisiana Purchase, two inches. Yeah. And it goes back, what, pushing, what, 200 years now? Well, they were, when they did the border of Missouri, the yeah. guys who, Dwayne Camp tells a story about, when they did the border of Missouri, he knew that they were off a little bit, and, I mean, like a little bit, and he says, he never took to, he never cashed the check, you know, he says, I, he said, I won't be paid because I'm not 100% sure whether it's like here or here. I mean, wow. It was literally one of those kind of things. Yeah. And the guy didn't take the money. Wow. So. Yeah. Wow. That's impressive. That was, that was like real work. Yeah. Real yeah, work. Yeah, I'd like to see the study. <laughs> you know, you look at the United States map and you see the shape of Arkansas and you see the boot hill of Missouri fit in. You know, it's amazing how they got the boundaries of the states. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, we got about a minute to go. Final thoughts. Tommy, bump. You know, I, I tell you, I won't say this. Uh, we enjoy coming to Mountain Home so much. It's good this, to have you. This Always is good. a beautiful place. And you're not just in Mountain place. Home. This covers we Everywhere. Just cover, yeah. I mean, we cover a pretty big area. Even right, in Harrison. Here, so. yeah. But uh, uh, it's such a beautiful place. People are friendly, uh, easy to get along with, accommodating. Yep. And I just want to compliment this area, I tell you, for, for just how accommodating y'all are. Thank you very much. Bob? Nothing. I, I appreciate you coming up, and you know the citizens need to see their public officials come up and uh, that they interact with them and see that they are real people. And if they have an issue, know that they can reach out and touch uh, touch somebody. Is there like is there a phone number down there that if somebody has a question about this stuff, is there like an office yes, number to is. get things started? Do you have a card on you yet? I'm sorry. See, and I said I wasn't. Gonna, I said I wasn't going to blindside anybody, and then I did. Here we go, Commissioner I'm State Lands. So if somebody wanted to talk to the office down there, they could call 501-291-9173. And with that, uh, we better go. And Eight seconds. Thanks for go. being here. Thanks, everybody. Tommy. Thank you. Thanks. See you tomorrow.